Hey guys, what's going on? JH Vlogs here, back with another video, this time on how to budget as a student in 2021 with a brand new intro clip I'm feeling great about. Let's roll it. I love it and I can't get over it. I do realise that by the time you're seeing this, it would have already been applied to two or three videos, but I can't help filming a bit ahead so that when exam season rolls around, I can keep the pressure off of myself while still consistently uploading content for you guys. Anyway, let me know what you think about the intro down in the comments box below, along with any other questions you may have. So today's video on how to budget as a student in 2021, I'm mainly going to be focusing on giving you a strategy on how to budget rather than specific money saving tips and techniques. Although saying this, if you stick around to the end, I will cover a few of these for the most common student expenditures. But the reason I haven't touched on this too much is because everybody spends their money differently. So it might not be as applicable for you. Whereas this method is solid and works across all budgets. Firstly, we need to figure out how much we have to budget from in the first place. The easiest way to start this off is to total up all of your incomes. So that can be from your student loan, from your part-time job, your scholarship, from your bursary, any side hustles, or if you're lucky enough, money from friends and family, etc. Just get down every single form of income you've got. Now, to get this on a consistent basis, I'll work out my total income for that whole university year. This will be easier to do when you have more fixed incomes like a student loan as opposed to a side hustle or your own business but stick with me here. But I create this grand total amount for the year and then I begin to minus away the fixed cost necessities that I have for living. So this includes things like my rent and my phone contract. And then I begin to take away my fixed wants more than needs. So my gym membership, my society membership, any money that I want to save for a holiday over the summer, different people's birthday money, Christmas money, etc. And I take all of this away from the grand total amount that I had. This remaining number that I have, I then divide by the number of weeks I'm at university, which is normally 33, 30 weeks of term plus the three reading weeks. And that will then give me a budget that I can spend on a per week basis. Now I'm going to be really basic here as I don't want to reveal my own budget and I certainly don't know your budget as the viewer. So let's just say after you've deducted all of this, so after you've totaled up your income, after you've minus those fixed necessities to live, after you've minus the fixed wants you wanted to live, and then divided by the 33, that number, let's just say that's gonna be 100 for the sake of simplicity. That gives you 100 pounds per week to spend as a budget. The next step is to deduct the flexible essential costs. Now these are just as essential to you living, but tend to fluctuate more on a week to week basis. So for instance, gas, electricity, heating, things like that. You'll obviously use more in the winter and food. I tend to vary the amount I spend on food depending on my other incomes. Like I try to spend as much as possible, but obviously sometimes I have to cut back. I will then immediately total all of these up or an estimate of what these will be up and subtract that from the 100. Whichever number you're left with then, and I appreciate this point, it's quite a long chain of numbers. Hopefully I've got it up on screen. I will then divide by seven to give me a daily amount I can spend. Now, again, for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna say that those variable necessity spends, so the food, the heating, etc. I'm gonna say those come to 30 pounds per week, giving you 70 left over. 70 divided by seven gives you 10. That then gives you a budget of 10 pounds per day to spend. I then write that 10 pound figure in my phone notes. And every time that I make a purchase, so say a meal deal, clothes, anything, I'll subtract from that amount. Let's say I did a three pound meal deal, take my 10 pounds minus three, that leaves me with seven. I know I've then got seven pounds to spend for the rest of the day and I'll keep it all totted up like that. Again, taking everything away from this number and keeping that all on my phone notes made it very, very simple. I did once make a full budget Excel spreadsheet, but it was a lot of effort. Like how many times am I gonna fire up my computer and edit it and do this? Like English, good. Um, Whereas on my phone, on my phone notes, every night I can just jump on, I can check it, see what's happened on my banking app, where have I spent money, minus that. And then any money I've got left over from that day, I know I can spend tomorrow. So let's say I get to the end of the day and I've only spent five pounds. I know that my budget the next day is 15 pounds. Or say if I've gone over it, say if I've spent 12, I try and only spend eight the next day. It really is flexible. It's not then meant to be like a cage that you're stuck in and you can't go over it and you should start losing sleep. It's just a rough guide if you're in the right ballpark to stretch your budget out for the year. The idea is just seeing if you're spending at a sustainable level or not. 
so that you can slowly make adjustments so that your budget will stretch for the entire term or year in this case. Personally, I don't even tend to spend a flat amount per week. So some weeks arise where I may spend a lot more. These don't tend to be planned. They tend to be sp spontaneous, either payments that suddenly come up or if we decide to go out an extra time that week. And all it means is I just have to recoup it at some point down the line. But it's no good saying like, okay, for this example, say you spend 200 pounds one week. It's no good saying like, oh, I'm gonna spend zero the next. It's just, okay, maybe I'll spend 80 for the next five weeks. The reason this is so key is because with your student loan, you're given all your money at one point, and it is a whole lot of money, but it's gonna last you a whole lot of time. And there is just that temptation to get it all gone immediately because why not? Party time, right? I'm just trying to help with the idea of budgeting it out over the whole term or the whole year. And if you do find yourself consistently struggling to remain within this budget, it may then be time to look at getting additional sources of income. I'll be, po I'll be doing a video soon on how to make money as a university student, which when I do, I'll link up above with the I button if you wanna follow that through once that's uploaded, or it could be time to start looking to cut expenses in other areas and get more creative with the budgeting. This is another reason why in previous videos, I've recommended that before you come to uni, try and get some savings up as a buffer because this budgeting plan won't work immediately. It'll take some time to adjust to and to get right. And having those savings can just act as a little buffer so that you feel more comfortable experimenting with your budgeting. It's something I certainly didn't get right at the start, but it's just about averaging it out roughly. Slight differentials won't matter too much. You could even do it where you spend less on certain weeks on purpose in order to enable yourself to spend more down the line, or certain days that might be, or even certain months. Also, as a side note, freshers can often be the most expensive week of the year. So if you're watching this after just completing freshers, don't worry, expenses don't always tend to be that high. It can just be that one-off week. But yeah, I mean, the main benefit for me of this method is teaching the consequences of buying. So it shows me that if I get this, it means I can't get that later. Or if I forego this, I'm able to get that later, as opposed to just having this big block of money that you just sort of take random chips into as and when you need it. But moving on to money saving tips, I'll split these into five categories. And those are going to be food, general life, nights out, travel so on food eating out is very expensive and takeaways can be more expensive once you include the delivery so if you can cook for yourself as far as possible you're going to be making money saving moves especially if you're cooking in bulk and freezing or fridging the extra portions and coming back to them later in the week tupperware is probably the most successful investment i've made during my time at uni and they, as they've paid for themselves many many times over having meals ready done there in front of me also stops me ordering takeaways as I can literally just put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. And those are my big Achilles heel when it comes to budgeting. Plus there can be other benefits when you bulk cook. So for instance, there could be less food wastage as you're not just cooking for one. You've also got access to cheaper ingredients as you're cooking in bulk, meaning that the price per meal goes down. And there's the time saving elements. You may only have to cook one or two days a week. In the others, you can do whatever. On food, I would also recommend doing your food shopping online. This doesn't just save you the time and effort of carrying it back through town, but supermarkets don't have as much of ability to play the mind games on you that see you fill up your trolley full of things you didn't even know that you wanted. I would also advise that when you go shopping to go with a shopping list so that you have a rough idea of what you want and that you get things that go together instead of just like a random amalgamation of lots of different things. And the other budget saving measure regarding food is to look for cheaper alternatives. This can be the non-branded things, and this can also be your choice of supermarket. Now, I may be wrong here, but I believe in a study it was found that Aldi produces the cheapest fresh ingredients and Asda does the cheapest like dried, tinned, etc. ingredients. In the UK, that is. And now that might just be one survey at one particular time, but it stands to reason you can shop around a bit, see where you can get the best deals. When you think about it, a lot of foods are homogenous. So say broccoli. The broccoli isn't actually going to be that different depending on which different brand you use. It's the same thing at the end of the day, it's broccoli. It's not like it's got like extra loud speakers or it can carry extra weight. Like it's broccoli. It can be the exact same product at lots of different prices. So why not pick the cheaper version? Now, talking of getting the same product for a cheaper price, onto my general life tips. And that is to carry your student card on you at all times and always ask if a company is running a student discount as it's not always clear which places do and don't offer a student discount or you may have missed the sign or the advertisement. One student discount that stands out to me is the 30% rail ticket. I know a lot of people that have got good usage out of it, me included, I've saved myself a lot of money. 
So if you are using the trains regularly, I do recommend definitely getting that, especially if you're doing long journeys, it really adds up. You'd be amazed just how many different companies and different products have a student discount on them. So Apple's another very well-known one, and it can really help you to stretch your budget. The next general life tip is to look what's included in your university fees. So for me personally, I know that I've got all the Microsoft, the OneDrive, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, it's all included through the university, as well as a full subscription to the Financial Times, which I was very close to getting my own version of before I realized I got it through the uni. So just take a couple of seconds to say, Google, does the University of Reading provide Microsoft Word for you before you were to click that purchase? Jumping to nights out, and again, a pretty basic tip, is to pre quite hard and buy less drinks within the club as they're so much cheaper, say, from the supermarket. We tend to go to Aldi for hours, we can get 10 beers for £3.30. You'd be pushed to get one beer for £3 inside a club. Another tip is to buy your tickets online. The two main vendors at Reading are Fatsima and Eventbrite, and buying them on here tends to be cheaper than buying them on the door, especially if you can get hold of the early bird releases which you can find online, which will give you an even greater discount on the price. Moving on to travel, as I alluded earlier, the student rail card is absolutely essential if you travel by the train. Alongside this, I can recommend walking to as many different places as possible. It's great in Reading, where I go to uni, as nearly everything's accessible by foot, as it is only a small town. And I mean, it's completely free, it's good for you, and it's good for the environment, so it's a win all round. I do get caught out in the rain though occasionally, it has to be said but I probably walk to 95% of the destinations that I go to. There's also obviously cycling as an alternative to walking. Now, if you are traveling longer distances, taxis can be very expensive. So I try and recommend the bus. It's also better for the environment. So there's another little win and it can just help again, fit more into your budget. And that's pretty much everything I've got to cover in this video. It's a slightly different style today. I've tend to use less of a structured script and sort of like flow more. So let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. Also, let me know if you try out the budgeting method I mentioned or any of the money saving tips. Again, I'd love to hear if you have tried anything out in the comments below. And yeah, thank you very much for your time and have a wonderful rest of your day. Yeah.